Now, often we see during elections, you all see there is a lot of competition among different political parties. So, the next heading is, is it good to have political competition? See, elections are all about political competition. The most obvious form is the competition among political parties. You all know that different political parties, you know, they always they have competition. So, let's say if a political party says, okay, if we come to the power, we will, let's say, you know, uh, give, you know, uh, 10 lakh rupees to uh, or 10 lakh people employment every year, right? Sometimes uh, political parties do promise these things that if we come to the power, we will be giving employment to at least 10 lakh people, right? And the other political party, that party might say, okay, they are giving 10 lakh people employment. So, they would increase the number. We will give 20 lakh people employment, right? We will wave off the loans of the farmers, etc., etc. So, is it good to have this political competition? We are going to read this thing. At the constituency level, it takes the form of competition among several candidates, right? So, what happens? I'll be teaching you what is a constituency soon. But before we are moving on to constituency, I will quickly tell you uh, that this competition, see, healthy competition has to be there. There's no harm in having healthy competition. But this competition should not take form of, you know, uh, malpractices or, you know, frauds or bribes, etc. Hmm? And if there is no competition, elections will become pointless. That is also one thing. So, there has to be healthy competition, but it should not be converted into cheating, I would rather say. Now, competition should be there among the leaders, among the political parties. That is for sure, a healthy competition has to be there. Out of competition, these political leaders always promise people that, you know, uh, if we come to the power, we will do so and so things for you. Now, if they fail to do so, what should be done? They should be rewarded or they should be punished? See, accordingly, they should be rewarded and punished both. Now, if the political party, if the political party promises to do something and they do it successfully for the people and people are happy for them, they will be rewarded. How? Because in the next election, people will choose them and they will again come to the power and serve the people. But if they fail to do so, if they do not fulfill the wishes of the people, then people will not vote for them and they will not come to the power next time and this will be the punishment for them, right? So, people have the, you know, power, people have this power of rewarding or punishing these politicians, right? So, elect this competition will, you know, uh, help those people to understand, right? For example, if a political party promises and if they fulfill it, people will reward them, they will come to the power next time. If they do not fulfill it, people will punish them by not, by not voting for them next time, right? Politicians also know that, you know, if they raise issues that people want to be raised, their popularity and chances of victory will be increased in the next elections. But if they fail to satisfy the voters with their work, they will not be able to win again. This even, you know, politicians know. So, they also work accordingly, right? It happens, no? that, uh, you know, uh, political parties, what do they do? They will promise you 10 things, but they will try to fulfill all of them. I'm not denying, but they at least try to fulfill 70% things so that people choose them next time. Otherwise, people will not choose them next time, right? You can see it in the cartoon. The cartoon says, Mere paas yojnaye hai, ghoshnaye hai, vaade hai. Kaun bol raha hai baat? The politician, right? But the supreme power of electing that particular political leader is in the hands of the common people. So, the common person is saying, Mere paas vote hai, right? You all know this thing, a uh, very popular dialogue hai, Amitabh Bachchan ka, Mere paas maa hai. So, ye usi se ek uh, inspirational ek dialogue inhone cartoon banaya hai ki political leaders bhoat saari baate karte rehte hai, bhoat saare, you know, declarations kar karte rehte hai ki we'll do this, we'll do that. But at the end of the day, unko choose karne ka aur hatane ka power kiske paas mein hai? Logo ke paas mein hai. Toh jo political competition hai, wo bhi, it is also important. In the another cartoon, you can see a political leader is, uh, you know, moving with a sack on his back, right? Keeping all the promises in the sack. So, what do we understand from this? If a political party is motivated only by desire to be in the power, even then it will be forced to serve the people, right? Even if a political party, if they only want to remain in power, but still they have to fulfill the promises they have made to the people because if they will not do so, people will not choose them next time, right? Then political competition may cause divisions and some 
ugliness also sometimes but it finally helps to force political parties and leaders to serve the people right so sometimes you know there is some ugliness also you all know there are fights you know uh, political leaders they speak bad things about each other sometimes on the television we see in the newspaper also we read sometimes right but it finally helps them you know to serve people in a better way because ultimately the goal of the political party should be to serve the people right now what is our system of elections how elections happens in our country how elections take place in a you know uh, one of the largest democracies like india so you all know as i already told you the term for elections here in our country is 5 years so after 5 years the term of all the elected representatives comes to an end which means for example we saw the example of haryana government right choudhry devilal came to the power so for how long he'll be ruling for 5 years after 5 years again elections will take place and people will again vote and choose their representative so after 5 years the term of all the elected representatives which means those representatives or political leaders who were chosen earlier by people their term comes to an end right so after 5 years the lok sabha and the vidhan sabha gets or stands dissolved okay then what happens elections are held in all constituencies at the same time either on the same day or within a few days this is called general election you all you know must be seeing in the newspapers ki elections aane wale hain right so during elections what happens people all go and they vote for their representative so there are two ways of elections in our country one is after every 5 years elections take place right this is called general election and the other way is by election what is by election so sometimes election is held only for one constituency to fill the vacancy caused by death or resignation of a member this is called by election so sometimes it happens that a particular you know a uh, person or a particular political leader or mla or mp is died or resigned due to some reasons then to fill that particular seat elections happens and such elections are known as by election now what is electoral constituencies we need to understand very very important in our country we follow an area based system of representation the country is divided into different areas for purposes of elections these areas are called electoral constituencies now what happens i'll quickly draw on the board and show you i'm drawing a rough map of india please uh, pardon me for my drawing skills and all it's a very very rough map so what happens how constituencies are divided so you know that india is a very very big uh, country right so how do we understand how do we divide the constituencies so india is a very big country now the population is also too much and we need to choose leaders who can serve the people who can serve that particular population now we have to divide them properly so that you know uh, in every uh, area there has to be one representative who can you know listen to the people who can you know understand the problems of the people how it will happen when we will divide it properly so how do we divide it we divide the country into constituencies right in you know equal areas we divide like this it is a rough map children i am telling again so the entire country is divided like this okay now these small small blocks are known as constituencies okay these are known as constituencies the entire country is divided into these blocks so after dividing the constituencies what happens how people vote so the voters who live in a particular area they elect one representative okay Now for Lok Sabha elections the country is divided into 543 constituencies how many 543 543 earlier this number used to be 545 but earlier you know there was there were 545 seats now it is 543 two seats were reserved for anglo indians which is now removed okay so now we have total 543 seats in the lok sabha you can see the country is divided into different constituencies okay the representative elected from each constituency is called a member of parliament or a m or a or an mp 
now people i told you will be voting for a one representative they will be choosing one representative that representative will be known as member of parliament or mp now similarly when vidhan sabha elections happens what happens each state is divided into a specific number of assembly constituencies in this case the elected representative is called the member of legislative assembly or mla now earlier we saw entire country we divided into different constituencies now we are seeing that state elections also take place right in rajasthan goa jharkhand gujarat different states elections happens now for state elections again the state is divided into different constituencies and when people elect representative in that particular constituency in a state within a state then that representative is known as mla member of legislative assembly now each parliamentary constituency has within it several assembly constituencies there are many co assembly constituencies in one parliamentary constituency same way if there is a small village that village will be divided into now this village there is a small village so village will be divided into wards what do we call it wards earlier we were calling it constituency now we will be calling it wards different wards okay now each wards elect one member of the village or the urban local body 